I, I again, I've been overly critical of Brock Purdy. I had to delete about 150 tweets when he became our quarterback because I said so you many were mess- critical of him prior to being a so many messed up things about him in Iowa State because he was garbage there. I mean, there's a reason why he was drafted last. And and listen, I obviously have forgiven him. He's he's you know he's in my good graces now because he won some games for my favorite team. But at the end of the day, uh, I want Trey to be my quarterback. Yeah, I'm gonna just be totally honest with you. I want Trey to be my quarterback. One, I the, the only time I've ever seen an explosive athlete or, or a guy who had an, the ability to actually run the ball with Kyle Shanahan was RG3. I, I mean, it didn't work out well, but it looked really good for a little bit, didn't it? It looked, looked fantastic. Um, I'm not saying he's RG3, but I, again, I I want that. I want to I want to see the video game offense. I don't want to have to enter every week and know that if my quarterback doesn't play perfect and, and, and doesn't, you know, because, I again, it, that, that's what it is for me. I want Trey to be the guy. One, we gave up a lot to get him. Obviously, like someone mentioned in the chat, like we, we've already gotten past the, the, the picks, but I want him to be my – I want that guy to be my quarterback. So you, you used a couple words uh, in describing Brock Purdy. And, we, you know, we can – I know we can go on and on about Trey Lance again. And I'll kind of – my thoughts in general, I would just like to know what the fuck he is or what he isn't, right? And I feel like all four games, you just don't know. The team doesn't know, and that's why they're like, well, at least we know more of what we got from Brock Purdy. But you use some interesting words there with Brock Purdy. And you use the word serviceable. And you use the word, well, he was efficient. efficient. So, you know, listening to the words that you used, you sound like you're not as sold on the legend of Brock Purdy as maybe others. So what kind of, what are you seeing within the context of how the games maybe worked out or for you to just not be like all in, like we see some others. Listen, I listen, I'm all in on, I'm all in on whoever Kyle decides is the guy. I'll go as far as to say that. Cause we have, he, the performance that Brock Purdy put out, we're going to give him credit, but we're going to also give the pieces around him a high level of credit the running back, the offensive line, the, the, the weapons, and then the deployment of those weapons. That's that's huge. That's very huge, okay? When I use the words like efficient, listen, the number one thing that Brock Purdy did last year was he didn't give the ball to the other team. Number one, and you know this, the, the, that's the ball security is the most important thing. Don't give it to the other team. You have an elite defense on the other side, you're going to have a chance to win every single week. That's the reality of it. You can have a chance. Um, he didn't turn the ball over, and again – Am I sold on him being the the starter? Yes. Am I sold on him being the franchise quarterback? Absolutely not. Mm. No, because I don't think he, I don't think he's this super dynamic player that can, that can make the two, three big plays. He can make the two, three plays in the, in, in the confines of the offense, as far as like, you know, distributing the ball, but Again, it's, it, it comes down to Kyle being a, a great game planner and there being a ton of help around him. I mean, you, there, that's what it is. We traded for McCaffrey, like just across the board, offensive line, receiving group, tight end groups, and then system. I mean, what young quarterback doesn't, wouldn't want to be where, you know, what Brock Purdy got or inherited? Like I said, the number one thing is I can't take away, listen, I can't take away from the processing I can't take away from the from the not turning the ball over, right? And I can't take away from winning the games that you start. But I can say, do I think I can ask Brock Purdy to go win me the game? No. I can ask him to not lose it. He showed me a really he did a really good job of that last year. But do I think that with more tape on him and 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 defenses being able to game plan for him week to week, do I trust him? I don't. Can you expound on that? Because I think a lot of times when people hear oh, tape on him, tape on him, right? And it's like, oh, they have tape on him, whatever. You know, my thoughts on like having tape on somebody is starting to learn just the more information and data you're able to gather on a player, start to learn what they do well, maybe things they don't do well, the way that they see the field. And then once the defenses, you know, the coordinators, they start to adjust to, hey, well, Brock probably likes to do X, Y, Z. Then it's on Kyle and Brock to kind of throw another counter out there. But w- when you say like, man, you know, the, the film, the tape out on him, what can you like expound on that a little we, bit more? We can use an example uh, in the history of our franchise. 
and, and it might, this might touch a few people the wrong way, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Once, once, we, once the league saw the things that he wasn't good at, defenses can game plan to force you into doing the things you're not great at. The, pro, the thing is, is that I look at the tape on Brock Purdy, and it's not that it's bad or anything of the sort, and that's not what I, what I want to say, what I, what I want to do. I just think that there are – some limitations to his game. I don't think that it's, he, like I said, he's not like some super, he's not a super athlete. And again, he has the perfect storm around him. You know what I mean? And I think that that's what it is. It's like, once the league gets, you know, sees what you do, right. They now are going to game plan to do things, to force you to do things differently. Now we could honestly believe that Kyle can just adapt to it and, and, and call a game where he never puts his quarterback in that situation. But at some point, the quarterback's going to be asked to make two or three big plays. And I don't – I just – again, I don't believe he's the guy. I don't believe he's, he, he has that, 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 that X factor that you see from the, bet, the best quarterbacks. I think he's a, a good game manager who's good, who did a great job of distributing the ball last year. And if Trey Lance does that with the added ability to be a dynamic athlete, I mean, he's a better quarterback. I think the issue is that we don't know if Trey, because we haven't gotten that, enough. Uh, we, in the areas that Trey needed to develop, we haven't seen him play enough to develop in those areas. And I think right now, that's why. And I don't think, like, let's say week one, you got to go out there, you got to win a game. Who are you starting, Trey Lance or Brock Purdy? Hey, everybody's healthy. Everybody, or I don't even say week one. We'll say we're going to fast forward. We don't know what happened in weeks one through 16 or 17, but we know week 18, get playoffs on the line. We don't know anything else that happened, but you have to choose right now between Brock Purdy, who's 100% healthy, and Trey Lance, who's 100% healthy, to go in and start the game. Who are you going to choose? I'm choosing today. You're choosing uh, that today. Choosing today. It would have to be Purdy. Right. Right. So there's, there's, a, good, there's going to be a lot of people that take what you're saying as like, that you don't think this guy can play, but clearly like, that's not what, I don't think that's what anybody's saying. Right. Listen, a guy goes undefeated in the games he started and goes from last pick in the draft to potential rookie of the year. How can you even fathom arguing with him being the starter? You'd have to be a complete jackass to think, well, you know, this guy didn't lose any games. I think we should just bench him. How stupid does that even sound? Right. It doesn't make any sense. Trey Lance has to perform at an extremely high level in the preseason in order to take the job from Brock Purdy. I'm, I'm aware of that. I think Brock Purdy's aware of that. I think Trey Lance is aware of that. I think you know that too. Brock Purdy performed too well over the stretch of time that he played last year to not earn the right to be the starter. And, it, it, it's, and if anybody's arguing that at this point, they're idiots. They're an absolute idiot. That's why you keep hearing me say stuff like, I want Trey to be the starter. Not that he is going to be the starter. I want him to be because I'm selfish and I want an athletic six foot five quarterback who kind of resembles Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he should probably shave his head, but you know, like I, I would rather that guy. I was just being honest. This is me. And also, you know for, why though, Sosa? For sure. You and I, before we got on here, you, you, you mentioned something about building your own platform and what goes into that, right? You're like, man, you know, I can, probably join a network and something that people have um, built already. But man, I like building my own and the process of that. So when you see Trey Lance, you see the potential in that business investment. You see that, Hey, this might not be an overnight thing, but if I stay patient and I work through it and I grind, like what it potentially can be. So that's what you're talking about when you mentioned Trey Lance, as opposed to, what Brock Purdy is, which I think both of us feel more comfortable with. Right now, I got to have one guy start to win the game. I'm going to lean with him over Trey. And I see somebody in the chat, they're like, well, Trey, he won the must-win game against Houston, right? And it's like, yes, he did. We kind of had no choice, right? Because if you had a choice, you probably would say, well, I would probably rather have Jimmy Garoppolo start that game. And Trey went in there, he did great, and that was awesome. But that wasn't by anyone's choice. So that's why it's like, if you have a choice right now, it's like, yeah, of course, I would lean with Purdy. But if I'm somebody like me who I am a big, strong believer in player development, I just know that everybody's development path is different. That's where I lean Trey Lance. But unfortunately, because of the situation, 
and the timetable of the 49ers and, and the window that they're currently in, you it would be extremely difficult for and I think irrational. And I think everybody would say that would be stupid to start Trey Lance week one if Brock Purdy is 100% healthy. 